Hi everybody and welcome back to part 3 of sculpting and 3D printing a sci-fi statue in ZBrush. In this part I would like to demonstrate my techniques when developing a character's costume. I'll begin by roughly blocking out armour pieces by using a masking and extracting workflow before moving on to adding things like straps, breathing tubes, holsters and eventually the helmet. First of all I'll begin by sketching a rough guide for myself on our body subtool using the damp standard brush. I'll mask out areas and push and pull where needed, keeping it very loose and free to be changed at any time, should the overall design require it to be. I'll continue to make minor changes to the form, but we'll try to keep these to a minimum at this stage. After I've sketched out a template, I'll mask out shapes on the body for extracting rough armour pieces into separate subtools for further manipulation. I'll simply mask out the shape I want the armour piece to be, go to the subtool palette, extract, set the thickness to what I require, and then hit extract. Said remeshing these pieces, once created, will help preserve the sharpness in the edges, but at this initial stage of the armour blockout, it's really only rough guide shapes I'm looking for, as anything too neat and tidy or detailed will likely be required to be changed further down the line as more pieces of armour begin to be added and the character becomes better defined. We want to continue to look at the model as a whole and find a flow for the costume that suits the genre, aesthetic or just the overall feeling we're aiming for with the sculpt. By this point I've decided she's a pilot and her ship's been shot down minutes before the moment we're capturing and so her costume must be lightweight, something that would allow her to fit inside the cockpit of a light aircraft and remain agile when on the ground. So I'm using the shapes defined in our earlier block out to help guide our design somewhat as well as using references of real life pilot's clothing used both on the ground and in the air. Extracting basic shapes means we can work on one side of the model and mirror and weld to the other side. This also takes the pressure off accidentally working in asymmetry. At this point I'm leaving all of the extracted subtools at zero subdivision levels after Z remeshing. It's important, especially with armour, that the individual elements don't fall randomly across the body. We want every piece to make sense and have a use. It must affect its neighbouring pieces by attaching correctly in place and fitting with the aesthetic style of the rest of the costume. It must be believable. Place yourself into the world of the character you're designing and for every piece of armour and clothing ask yourself, why was this manufactured? How was it manufactured? What purpose does this particular element serve within the world your character resides in? Does your costume allow for the character to move swiftly while providing a decent level of protection from incoming fire? Is it part of a spacesuit? If so, it would surely incorporate practical safety elements like respiratory apparatus, a fully airtight bodysuit and helmet, visors, jetpacks for EVA travel, and so on. Does your character have a rank within a faction? If so, how high? In the case of this character, virtually none of the costume will be there to serve only an aesthetic function. She's a pilot, and every armour plate and accessory has been created by either machine or high-end equipment and only exists to serve her efficiency as a soldier. It's important to think about these things when spending such a large amount of time on a single character. The deeper you can get into the world, the better for the design and personally, the more fun it is to create. For the minute, the design of the character is the most important thing, and so I'm not thinking too much about the eventual 3D printing of the sculpt. We will analyse the model further down the line and make changes to the design regarding the print if needed. For now, the focus is purely on the creative aspect of designing the character and being completely free and loose with my workflow. As more and more of the armour pieces and other subtools get added to the list as we extract them, it's good to begin thinking about keeping them all as low poly as possible, 
it will be easy for us to get carried away with this fast method of blocking out accessories that before we know it our poly count's too high. Because this is to be printed, every square inch of the model needs to be able to withstand close scrutiny from 360 degrees, and so the further into its creation we get, the more subtools are going to be required to be high detail. It might be worth testing your machine for how many polys ZBrush can handle on your particular setup. My setup can get to 15 or 20 million per subtool and close to 200 million total before ZBrush begins to struggle. You don't want to get close to the end of the process and realise that ZBrush can no longer handle the level of detail you're asking of it and have to backtrack your work. Make use of the IMM brushes and straps brush at this stage to block out where things like straps, tubes and ties are going to be. I'll place them in for now and bring them in line with my character's aesthetic later in the detailing process. Continuing on the same technique, I'll move over the entire body, implementing all of the theories and methods I've discussed so far. And as we build more pieces, the original body subtool will become less and less visible for separate extracted geometry. This then gives the original body mesh a somewhat different purpose. It becomes something that we can use to fill in the gaps between the armour and the clothing. We can sculpt out with the clay brush and create connecting parts. We can continue to sketch form and guides for ourselves, or we can mask out areas and pull out more extreme forms if we want to. Remember this base body subtool is still in Dynamesh mode, and so we can really do what we want with it. Next I'll insert a cube and block out a rough pistol shape. Later we'll use the Z modeler brush to create fully detailed pistols, but now we only need a rough scale so we can pose the hands properly and get a better idea of the silhouette. If I then duplicate one of the pistols in Dynamesh at a very low Dynamesh resolution, I can use the low res version to begin to block out a holster that can realistically house the pistols, as well as get an understanding of whether the scale of the pistols are suitable for the character's costume. I'll use roughly the same technique for the boots, except I'll start by extracting the shape from a mask on the foot and Dynamesh from there. I use these techniques because it's a quick and easy method to get your shapes in quickly. But by no means is this the only way. We use this time to figure out what method is best for you. This is a time to begin to understand your character, but also to understand your own working practice. I am still learning new ways to create my characters that are more efficient and more effective. Let me know in the comments section some different ways in which you go about this process. Next I'll jump into the Z modeler brush by selecting it from the brush palette or by pressing B, Z and M. I'll initialize a cube and create the shape for one of the spine's vertebrae. I've used the Z modeler in this case because the shape will be duplicated many times to create the spine and I want to keep the poly count as low as possible. Using the trim dynamic brush with a lighter intensity and sometimes a lazy mouse radius of 15 to 20. You can bevel the edges while maintaining the manufactured look and feel to the pieces. I then sometimes use an inverted damp standard brush by pressing Alt while sculpting to sharpen some of the beveled edges. We can then use the H polish brush again on a lower intensity to really fine tune the shape. The H polish brush is a great way to quickly block out hard surface detail without having to get into anything too technical at this stage. The technical stuff will come, and so personally speaking the longer we can remain in the more artistic free flowing parts of the process the better. I'll use this technique on the larger pieces of armour, like these thigh plates. Masking out the area, building up with the clay brush using a reverse damp standard brush to sharpen the edges 
and then using a combination of the H polish and clay brush to build out the plate. Moving on to the helmet now, I'll start by taking a duplicate of the head we've already sculpted and dynameshing it at a very low resolution in order to get our helmet shape. I'll then inflate it slightly and begin to mask out and polygroup the areas of the helmet itself, leaving the shape of the visor behind. I'll extract the shape of the helmet and use the original shape as the visor. I'll then add thickness to the helmet and using a large move brush, make adjustments so it realistically fits the form of the head. I'll then begin to smooth out any stretched polygons, trying my best to keep the edges sharp. I'll then use the H polish along with the damp standard brush with alt pressed again to define some more of the sharper forms and generally tighten up the design. I'll begin to add details and sketch out components exactly how we've done on the body so far. I'll mask out the area, I'll set a thickness and I'll extract. I'll then move it into place, smooth it out, sharpen the edges, etc. Until we have a helmet that's beginning to look like what we want it to look like. As much as it might look technical, I'm still leaving myself free and open to change as I was with the body, because you never quite know whether a piece that you sculpt now is going to work with a piece that you sculpt further down the line. I'll use that same technique yet again to sculpt out more organic pieces like the hair, and now I'll begin to work on the padding material that will go in between our character's head and the helmet itself. Once I'm happy with the shape of the padding, I'll drop some dirty UVs onto it using the UV Master doesn't have to be anything special, we're simply using it to go into the noise maker under the surface menu, adding a quick rough material that can add a high level of detail really quickly. Another quick and easy way to get high levels of detail is to drag out brush alphas. This way you can get quite a complex looking design in a matter of seconds. These can be purchased or downloaded from places like ArtStation or ZBrush Central, or feel free to create your own in Photoshop. I'll also use the basic IMM brushes, in this case for the nuts and bolts that line the edges of the helmet. A lot can be achieved from the alpha dragging technique in quite a short space of time in terms of gaining inspiration from how the alpha falls across the model and freeforming ideas. At this point the block out is nearly complete. I'll spend a while going over the whole model, ensuring a consistent level of detail and believability over the whole model. And with that I'd like to thank you for watching and join me in part 4 where we'll create the guns using the Z modeler and re-topologize our sculpt so far.